Hello there, beautiful YouTube community. This is Amisha from Sacred Healing Journeys. So if you're new to this channel, a very warm and big welcome. Um, this is a series that I've been doing to um, go back to spiritual foundations on the seven particle chakras. We are now up to the solar plexus, as you can see from this beautiful big yellow symbol behind me, the Manipura. Um, but I decided to do this series. If you're catching up, please go back and watch the root and the sacral, if you like, after you've seen this one. But I decided to do this series when I saw that so many people were had so many blockages, even after years of being on their healing journey. And the benefits of slowing down and purifying each chakra step by step um, was what I was guided that people needed. The first three chakras are often the most challenging because this is where the human ego, where the blockages and the trauma, the wounding, um, where you'll find the root causes of these things. If you've got substantial solar plexus issues, for example, then you're not going to have an easy time of clearing it unless you've gone and seen what's kind of had a had a good deep dive into the root and the sacral. So the energy does not flow. And once you, you know, once you start this journey, you can't get everything out of the root while you're focusing on the root. But what tends to happen is they they are a continuum. And so as you move up this this amazing vertical pillar of our of our light body, you will find that you are able to clear much more deeply as you focus on one at a time. Um, okay, so let's talk about the solar plexus. Well, you know, it's the color yellow. So I think, you know, even that symbol of yellow gives away a lot about what this represents. This is our vitality. So when it's focusing in its optimum, it's our vitality, it's our power, it's our own personal sun. And it is a really beautiful energy center to, to have functioning um, with balance, harmony, and optimization. The organs associated with the solar plexus, I feel like these are big ones for so much of the population and so much of the damage that we do to ourselves um, in our this false matrix that we're in, in this like this world that we're living in right now, um, with you know a lower consciousness than many of us would like, although that is changing, um, sees the damage done in these organs. So it's stomach, liver the gallbladder, the upper intestines, the pancreas, and the spleen. So even though the sacral is the seat of our desires and addictions, what we do from not healing that part of us will have manifest up here um, through the solar plexus. If we spend a deal of our lifetime in our addiction state, not controlling that, just giving into it, not looking at it, we are not going to feel very vital, healthy, or full of confidence. We are not going to feel we have our own personal power and we are not going to feel like we've got everything, you know, really centered and in, in control. We're not going to feel like we're protecting ourselves and trusting ourselves. So you can see how one flows into the other. Now, just like the sacral as well, it is that's the seat of our feminine energy. The solar plexus is really the seat of our masculine energy. So men can really struggle with this energy center. But I can assure you that I see many women with issues um, in the solar plexus as well. And that's often because in this patriarchal dominant kind of um, reality that we've been living in for so long, women have naturally veered towards the comfort of their masculine energy. They are needing to control so much, do so much, be so busy, juggle many different roles at once, um, be the mother and the father at the same time quite often, um, you know, have a hat at work which is maybe high-powered, uh, lots of responsibility, a key word there for the solar plexus, and then come home and try and do the feminine roles of motherhood and wife and, you know, all of the caretaker, nurturer roles that the feminine holds. So 
this can be really tricky for both men and women. For men who feel the pressure of being a provider, um, being a protector and having that responsibility in the safe container, if that's not going well for the masculine, then they're going to be either weakened there or overactive there with, um, with you know, trying to control everything. But I'll talk a bit more about that soon. So if, you know, we haven't laid the foundations or if we have laid the foundations but we haven't done it well in the root chakra because we've been wayward by our desires or our desires haven't been um, looked at appropriately and we haven't got a handle on that and we haven't attracted good relationships, then what we project out into the world, what we've built and manifested is going to um, be a bit of a block or an issue at the solar plexus. So this is our personal identity. This is our self-confidence and self-esteem. So some of the keywords, um, which you'll you'll notice, they're very masculine keywords, are responsibility, action, self-trust, intimidation, self-esteem and self-confidence, willpower and honour. So, yeah, there's a real masculine flavour to those words. So it's at the, let's go a little bit deeper. So identity, at the core of your personality and identity, the solar plexus allows you to bloom if you are in your authentic self with your personal power, if you're really happy with the person that you've become, the person that you, you project out into the world, you're authentic, you don't have to wear a mask all the time, you know who you are, that's fantastic. But if these are a problem, then this can indicate some solar plexus imbalances. So your personal power the source of your personal power and your vitality. So you know how to say no, you know how to say yes, you know what you want in life and you go after it, but you don't need to be aggressive. You can use assertive, balanced energy. So this empowers you to also take control over what you're thinking and what your actions are. And also, even though it's other chakras are involved in this, also what you feel and what you say to other people. It's also about your willpower, as I've said, so channeling this personal power. This um, energy center, when it's working optimally, gives you the willpower and self-discipline to do what you need to do for your betterment, for your health, not just because you're trying to escape. It is the seat of your confidence, so it's responsible for your self-esteem and how you view yourself. If you like yourself, if you like what you've done with your life and what you project to the world, it gives you the confidence and self-assurance to, you know, continue to make good decisions. Also your intention and your action. So it gives you the power to transform your thoughts into action and to have good positive intentions for self and for your family or for others and your loved ones. Now, if your solar plexus is weak or blocked up, these are some of the things that you might experience. So lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, indecisiveness, feeling helpless, feeling like you really don't have a purpose in your life or you're not sure what that purpose is, and a low um, low motivation. However, if your solar plexus is overactive, and this I see, you know, just as much as the underactive you find yourself being a harsh critic and judge of others and yourself. You will try and blame others, externalize the situation while not taking your own personal power, not taking personal responsibility for things. Um, you can be really stubborn. You can yeah, be controlling. So this is kind of a bit like the, the wounded masculine traits that we hear about. Okay. Um, and so it's these people can be really pushy and domineering. So you have a desire to control others, overly critical and judgmental. There's a, there can be anger and aggression and just shifting blame, um, not being able to compromise. This is just not an energy that or a, or a behavior that comes naturally. Um, and you need to be right all the time. And so you'll have to have the last word. These are all kind of overactive solar plexus chakras. Okay, so we have all had experience of people who have both of those, and we may have also experienced times in our life when we've experienced both of those. So you can see that this chakra, 
is a bit of a doozy. And so I can assure you that when you do the work on the, the two preceding it, it does make clearing this one much easier. But it's important that whenever we go through the deep healing of these energy centers, and ultimately that's affecting our um, other layers of our of our being, other layers of our bodies, so our emotional, our mental, our physical, our spiritual, we don't want to judge ourselves because judgment obviously puts us back into that issue with the solar plexus. Uh, and so try and stay in a really compassionate witnessing state and you can contemplate your roots and your foundations and your ancestral healing with that base chakra. You can contemplate, you know, your relationships a bit more and your sexuality and um, your desires and addictions with the sacral and, and where you might have lacked joy and where you've let that go and your, your creativity, where's that gone? And then by the time you get up to the solar plexus, you have done a, quite a bit of work already. So this is going to be a lot more manageable. All right. So if you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. It, it helps more people see it um, and share it out if you feel like somebody really needs to know this information. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love to have you in this community. Okay. Sending you lots of love and I'll see you soon.